fine. Oh, I'm telling you, my jaw is broken. What? Hi everyone, I am here with a Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good night. Sherm's in a mood tonight. Aren't you, Sherm? No, I'm not. Yeah, he is. No, I'm not. Oh. I think, they, I think they broke my jaw, guys, I swear. And it ain't broken. If it was broken, you wouldn't be able to talk. Well, there's a big crack in it, Sherman. It hurts. There's big lumps in there. I got a lump in my cheek still. I'm taking these amoxicillin. Look at this. Amoxicillin. I took all of these almost. And I'm just, my mouth's still infected. And I even had some of the other antibiotic they gave me at the hospital. My mouth's still infected. This lump won't go away. It hurts. Oh, anyway. Well, let's see here. Tonight's devotion is by Grace Fox. Okay, and we'll be in the book of Psalms, Psalm 94. And the uh, verse that Grace picked out to go with her devotion tonight in Psalm 94 is verse 19 which says when the cares of my heart are many your consolations cheer my soul all right so let me mark that and I will go to Psalm 94 and read that I don't think it's a very long psalm most of the psalms are not You know I like the long ones. Yeah, it's not very long. It's oh, it's actually 23 verses. Okay. O oh Lord, the God who avenges, O oh God who avenges, shine forth. Rise up, O oh Judge of the earth. Pay back to the proud what they deserve. How long will the wicked, O Lord, how long will the wicked be jubilant? They pour out arrogant words. All the evildoers are full of boasting. They crush your people, O Lord. They oppress your inheritance. They slay the widow and the alien. They murder the fatherless. They say, the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob pays no heed. Take heed, you senseless ones among the people. You fools, when will you become wise? Does he who implanted the ear not hear? Does he who formed the eye not see? Does he who disciplines nations not punish? Does he who teaches man lack knowledge? The Lord knows the thoughts of man. He knows that they are futile. Blessed is the man you discipline, O Lord. The man you teach from your law. You grant him relief from days of trouble till a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not reject his people. He will never forsake his inheritance. Judgment will again be founded on righteousness and all the upright in heart will follow it. Who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will take a stand for me against evildoers? Unless the Lord had given me help, I would soon have dwelt in the silence of death when I said, My foot is slipping. Your love, O Lord, supported me. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought joy to my soul. Can a corrupt throne be allied with you? One that brings on misery by its decrees? They band together against the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my fortress and my God the rock in whom I take refuge. He will repay them for their sins and destroy them for their wickedness. The Lord our God will destroy them. All right, amen. 
And that was Psalm 94. All right, let me go back to devotion here. <sighs> okay. And Grace says, My husband Jean and I just returned from Slovakia where we'd helped host an English learning evangelistic family camp. We'd come home tired and jet lagged, added to our fatigue, so did thinking about our upcoming schedule. It included hosting evening informational meetings for our ministry, traveling to Bible colleges to engage with students, seeking mission opportunities, and speaking at retreats and conferences. I also anticipated helping my mom for a week, taking a break before hitting that schedule seemed necessary, so we prepared our boat and launched out. Several days of sunshine and soft breezes seemed the perfect antidote for our weary bodies and souls. Our morning, one morning, Jean put up the sails and set the steering to autopilot. I poured two cups of hot chocolate. We sipped our drinks and marveled at the beauty of the water and mountains. Suddenly a fin surfaced about 100 feet away, an orca well. The creature swam straight toward us. A second fin appeared and a third. Within seconds a pod of perhaps 30 orcas surrounded us. They swam in front of the boat under it and then one leaped out of the water behind us and landed with a giant splash. The chances of encountering an orca pod in the vast expanse of water were slim. Could it be that Jesus whispered to the wells and sent them to swim across our path? Jesus knows when we need encouragement and he's masterful at sending it our way. His consolations always come through his word but sometimes they come as an unexpected phone call or email, a favorite song or a hug. They come in the form of a baby's giggle, a bird's trill, and a rose's scent. Sometimes they even show up as a pod of orca wells. I hope she got pictures and videos of that. And the homework tonight, identify one consolation by which Jesus has cheered your soul recently. All right. And that was our devotion. Let's see. Our next devotion will also be in the book of Psalms. It will be Psalm 66. So I will get that set up here later. Now we can um, read the small devotion which yesterday's was called morning, and today's is called noon, like 12 o'clock noon. Psalm 62, 1 through 8. Psalm 62, 1. Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. When we draw near to God, our minds are refreshed and our strength is renewed. Our office is a busy place where things sometimes feel like they are moving at breakneck speed. This often involves meeting after meeting, hallway conferences, and an avalanche of email. In the midst of this extreme busyness, I sometimes feel the need to escape, to decompress my response, to create a quiet place on those days when I have no lunch meeting. I retreat to the quiet of my car. I grab some lunch and sit in my car where I can read, listen to music, think, pray, and be refreshed. I think this is the essence of what the shepherd psalmist points to in Psalm 23 too. He sees the good shepherd bringing him to quiet waters. 
that is waters to rest by. It pictures a quiet place, a retreat from the pressures of life, where you can rest in the presence of the shepherd of your heart and be strengthened for what lies ahead. Even Jesus withdrew to a solitary place to pray and commune with his Father. Mark 1.35 We all need retreats in our lives, not only because of the overwhelming nature of life, <clears throat> but also because of our dependence on the resources of the Master. In our fast-paced days, it is essential to find a place of solitude, as the old hymn says, a place of quiet rest near the heart of God. Where's yours? Okay, where's yours? You want to have it by the heart of God, that's for sure. All right, the next one will be... So we got morning, noon, and the next one is evening. Evening will be the next one. All right, so let's go to our animal devotion first tonight. This title, the story title, gives away the animal. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys guess first before I give away the title. Everybody pick your animal. And this one is by Missy Tippins, and the Bible verse is 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. And the title to this one is A Squirrel in the Bread Keeper. How'd that happen? I've always thought squirrels are cute. I even admit to talking to them on occasion in the trees around my back deck, but I have had one run-in with a squirrel that was too close for comfort. When I was a senior in college, living in an apartment, I began to hear noises in the kitchen. One day, I finally went searching for the source. My goodness, how long was it in there? When I opened the cabinet door high up over the stove, I froze in horror as I came face to face with a furry creature inside our Tupperware bread keeper. How did that happen? <laughs> when it suddenly moved, I slammed the door shut and ran from the room screaming. I didn't stop until I had torn out the front door. <laughs> I stood there squilling, fearing the animal had been about to attack. My terrified elderly neighbor came hurrying out to check on me. <laughs> Relieved that I wasn't harmed, she calmly told me it was probably a squirrel, but no way was I going to go back inside to look. I did what I had done. <laughs> Every other time something scared me, I called my dad. He came to investigate and had a good laugh at my overreaction. The squirrel had eaten its way inside our apartment through the top of the cabinet, had carved out a huge hole in our bread keeper, and had been happily chowing on the loaf of bread inside. I didn't know they could do that. Chew through a house like that? And a bread box? Dang! The event was funny after I realized the attack animal was a harmless squirrel caught snacking. But it was tough when I was in a moment of true fear. Just as I was grateful to my dad for helping me with my furry visitor, I'm also thankful I have a heavenly father I can go to with even my smallest fears. Amen. Think of a fear that has stopped you from moving forward recently. Take that fear to God now and let him calm your fear. Amen. Amen. All right, let me get this one up to the next one. Oh, good. The next one doesn't say what it is, so that's good. And now, the circle of kindness. I still got at least one or two of these left, guys. I know, I got a bunch of them this time, didn't I? America without her soldiers would be like God without his angels. Claudia. Pemberton. 
not to say anyone here. All right, circles of, circle of kindness. The first one is by Gina Malazzo from New York. This would be fun too, and I love it. I love getting and sending happy mail. I have always wanted to have a pen pal. Me too. So I recently searched on Facebook and found pen pal groups for women. I did that as well. After much hesitation, I finally joined. It was scary coming out of my comfort zone and writing to strangers, but I am glad I did. I have bonded with women from various states and countries through postcards and letters. We cheer one another up in this stressful time with stickers and bookmarks. That'd be so fun. I love stickers. Happy Mail is a kindness to others and myself. What a wonderful way to meet fascinating women, stay connected to the world during the pandemic, and form new friendships. My pen pals have inspired me to write to friends that I lost touch with and send them Happy Mail too. I love stickers. That's a very, very nice thing to do. It always makes somebody happy, especially when you open a letter or a card and it's got something in it, whether it's stickers or whatever, you know, that's always exciting. All right, and the uh, next one is by Monique Bull from Massachusetts. And she says, it brought me joy to share. One day I decided to bring in a sweet treat to share with my class. So I specially ordered pastries from a bakery in my area called Whisk Me Away Treats. Wow. The special bakery is a family-based business whose motto is striving to bake the world a better place one goodie at a time. I always enjoy s supporting small businesses because it's better for the environment and makes me feel great to buy locally. Not only did I get to give my class a treat, but I also helped a small business. It brought me so much joy to share the sweets. It was a true win-win. Well, that was nice of her, wasn't it? Very nice. And the last one is by Mary Hansford from Georgia. I was thankful for his honesty. I rushed home from the grocery store and reached in the passenger seat to grab my prescription for arthritis pain. And it wasn't there. Panicking, I realized I must have left it in the shopping cart. I immediately headed back to the store. In the parking lot, I saw a young man retrieving carts. I recognized him as a friendly, longtime employee of the store. Hurrying over to him, I asked, Did you happen to find a prescription envelope in a cart? He smiled. Yes, ma'am. I took it to the pharmacy. He then walked with me to the pharmacist and explained, what had happened. There aren't enough words to describe his kindness and honesty. That's true, because with pain medicine, she's lucky it wasn't gone. She's lucky it wasn't gone. That's a very honest young man right there. Does somebody else got it? They seen it with pain medicine? She wouldn't have got it back. And she, if she would have told the pharmacy, you know, or her doctor that it had been stolen or whatever, she still wouldn't have got another refill that month. That's how it is. We've dealt that with our pharmacy. Not with pain medicine, but with other medicines. This this stupid medicine, you know, that uh, you'd be like, why would you say that you didn't get it, you know, to get extra for? Like blood, blood pressure medicine or something. It might well uh, it was. And I told them, you know, they didn't give it to me in my bag. And they said that they put it in there. But it wasn't in there. And it wasn't in there. But they wouldn't, they wouldn't fill it because they said it was in the bag. That happens a lot. So, you really need to check your bags before you leave, guys. Because once you leave, you know, they're not going to believe anything you say. Alright, so that was everything for our Bible study tonight. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible study. Bye, guys. God bless. Good night.